Stage one of the biome cycle experiment is complete. What's next? We take what we've learned and take the next step forward. The mission, a near effortless path to cycling a reef tank, avoiding or managing the uglies and making reefing what it should be beautiful and fun. To do that, we reboot 12 tanks and combine what worked from round one into six different groups. The biggest driving factor in how we reshape the next wave of experiments is we're going to prioritize readily available tools, sources of media or rock that can be easily sourced and should provide consistent results from one reefer to another. Old, unavailable methods out, new readily available options in. We'll get to the next experiment design in just a second. First, a quick summary of what we've learned so far and the resulting questions that they pose. First, it's clear that the ocean-based substrates like ocean direct sand and aquaforest life source add microbiome to the tank that dry sand does not. But can that be used to defend against other bacterial issues like cyano? It was hard to tell in these tanks because so many got overrun by diatoms. Let's find out the answer when that isn't the case. Second, the tanks which had sources of microcrustaceans like pods to begin with avoided pests like diatoms altogether. Tanks which ended up with these pests were solved with the addition of pods later. So the answer to avoid them to begin with is not about pods or no pods. It's likely more about timing and getting them in there before we add the pests. Let's find out. Third, other than green algae, the gulf-based rocks seem to be one of the best solutions and it's likely the most consistent source of microbiome from all the wet live rock sources. What happens when we add in the utilitarian algae eaters? Let's find out. Fourth, throwing some established dark rubble into the sump, but otherwise 100% dry, sterile rock and stand produce some of the best results of the entire test. Can we find a replicable source of dark rubble that's readily available and will work well for everyone? Let's find out. Fifth, the corals are donors or sources of not just the good, but the bad and the ugly pests as well. Can we use dips that limit them and avoid them altogether? Let's find out. Those are the findings and questions. These are the six methods of biome cycling experiments that we're going to use to pursue the answers. The first two we designate as pseudo-sterile, our best attempt to date at establishing the good without the bad. Pseudo-sterile experiment number one, the microbiome seeded with the ocean direct sand and aquaforest life source dosed during the dark period. Microcrustaceans seeded with algae barns ecopods. Dry Marco rock as the habitat recreating the healthy, measurable biome from the first phase of the experiments coupled with pods, a simple, easy to reproduce and lower cost solution. Pseudo-sterile experiment number two, we attempt something similar, but with the aquaforest life source seeding microbiome to the most common sand out there, carob seas, special grade, and a different type of rock with aquaforest rock as well. Hopefully the life source will transfer the biome to this popular sand. Microcrustaceans seeded with algae barns, ecopods. In both of the pseudo-sterile experiments, we're going to attempt to control what is introduced as well. We'll perform two-minute hydrogen peroxide dips before every coral enters a tank, an aggressive approach to keeping the tank clean and limiting the introduction of undesirable pest organisms. Peroxide is a very aggressive dip, so knowing what makes it through that is just as critical for us to learn. Next, three experiments we designate as the cryptic fuge. We add natural sources of biome to a dark area of the tank, in this case, a hang-on fuge, to seed the biome without putting in the photosynthetics directly into the display. The first cryptic fuge, we order the Tampa Bay saltwater sand for the bottom substrate of our fuge and some Tampa Bay saltwater TBS rubble to fill in the rest of the fuge. Tampa Bay saltwater specializes wet aquaculture golf rock in what I used in my first tank nearly 20 years ago. This should see microbial biome, microcrustaceans, and provide a safe haven for them to replicate without adding photosynthetics directly to the display. The dark period, hopefully keeping overall photosynthetics at a very low level, Marco rock and dry sand up front in the display as a cost-effective aquascape solution. The second cryptic fuge nearly the exact same thing, but this time using the tested and certified biome provided by Aquabiomics sand and rubble microbiome seeded media coupled with reef nutrition pods. In this case, not just microbiome, but from someone who is attempting to do it in a more refined and controlled manner. The third cryptic fuge, aquaforest life source mud, life biofill media, and algae barns ecopods in the dark remote fuge. If this works, it'll be the trifecta of low cost, easiest, and readily available solutions of the bunch. 
Next experiment is based on wet live rock, TBS, Tampa Bay saltwater rock, because golf rock is really the only widely available source of wet live rock to the average reefer. Golf live rock is also the only live rock that's likely scalable to future reefers needs if this becomes the go-to. For this experiment, we use TBS Live Golf Sand as well as their base rock directly in the display. The base rock is all the microscopic biome and crustaceans, but without as much of the life and organics on the rock, and significantly lower cost than their premium rock that does come covered in corals and sponges. That's six tanks, two pseudo-sterile, three cryptic fuge, and one sustainable approach to live rock. So what about the other six? The other six will be the exact replicas, but with utilitarian crabs, snails, and stars, and fish. I believe that we'll see the results of a strong approach to microbiome and microcrustacean base from the first experiments combined with the final polish of the utilitarian fish and inverts, the micro, meso, and macro predators working together to a combined result, a redundant biome. One small exception with TBS rock experiment, the second tank will be the TBS package that comes with their premium rock. The package includes two pounds of rock per gallon, one pound of sand, hermits, snails, bristle stars, cucumbers, and peppermint shrimp. Different than the last time, we also monitor and manage the nutrients with water changes as well. With all the tanks, our macro predators or utilitarian fish will be the following one fox-faced rabbit fish, and a bristle-toothed tang for algae, a melanaris wrasse for flatworms, nudies, and predator bugs, and a file fish for aptasia or pest anemones. Miso predators, sand-sifting starfish, nasaria snails for sand, peppermint shrimp for aptasia, emerald crabs for bubble algae, cleaner shrimp for parasites, hermits and trochus snails for detritus and microalgae, bumblebee snails for a shot in the dark at vermitids. This experiment in all 12 tanks will have a four month cycle, all exactly the same. One month dark period, one month just enjoy the fish and inverts, one month enjoy the corals and let the tank deal with the pests that they introduce. Month four, it's time to put them all to the test and add the pest slurry. The goal, at least one repeatable path to a clean, easy tank and avoiding the tank cycle and ugly stage conversation forever. Hopefully, we'll find multiple methods that work with other ancillary benefits for each. Answers once we complete the phase two. Hit that subscribe button and the bell to know the moment that we release them all.